Hey everyone, it's Summer, the Unapologetic Esthetician here, and today we're continuing with part two of my four-part series on the newest Essium line, The Ordinary. It's a clinical yet affordable line of products that I've been impressed with thus far. In part one of the series, I go over their vitamins, serums, and retinol formulations in detail. If you missed it, here's an annotation. I'll also leave a link in the description if you'd like to check it out later. Today we're moving on to The Ordinary's Direct Acids. I'll be going over the benefits and considerations for each product, so if you're wanting to learn about a specific one, I'll leave timestamps in the description so you can go straight to what you're interested in. I'll also leave information in the description if you'd like to view research on anything I've talked about in this video. That's pretty much it for the housekeeping, so let's get into it. Direct acids work extremely well in removing the uppermost layers of our stratum corneum, leaving behind smoother skin, correcting pigmentation problems, and brightening our skin's appearance. In this case, The Ordinary uses lactic, azelaic, and alpha-lipoic acids for mild exfoliation, brightening, and balancing skin tone. Before I get into the details of each product, I want to go over a few general guidelines when it comes to the use of a direct acid. Not all direct acids work for every skin type and tone. If you are prone to hyperpigmentation, it is especially important for you to consult with a skincare professional before starting a home care regimen involving a direct acid. Hyperpigmentation can be difficult to treat and care must be taken to ensure the issue isn't made worse. Sunscreen is a must. I know I harp on this all the time, but unless you want to spend your later adult life correcting the bad decisions you're making now, Wear the freaking sunscreen. These direct acids shouldn't really be used every day. I don't care what Decium says, don't do it. And no, I don't care what their guide says. And I'm not interested in any possible serum you could apply afterwards to make sure your skin is moisturized. Just no. In most cases, it's just not necessary to apply a direct acid every day to get the results you want. This is why I always recommend going to see an esthetician for a skin evaluation. I promise you can find one. In fact, I'll go one step further and promise that you'll find one that's in your budget. It may not be easy, but it will be worth it. How often should you apply a direct acid? I'm never comfortable giving a recommendation if I haven't seen your skin, but to be safe, I'd start out with two or three times per week, maximum, for about 14 days, to allow your skin to adjust. If you absolutely feel like that isn't enough, you can increase from there. But seriously consider what I said about the esthetician thing. I'm not doing this for my benefit. I don't even know you, but I do care. I'm doing this because I've seen what can happen when people think they know more than an expert. If anything, the benefit I get is knowing that you're gonna end up with gorgeous, glowing skin thanks to my pushing you to see a skincare specialist. I'm okay with this. It's best to apply any direct acids to the skin in the evening to significantly reduce the chance of increased photo damage. Also, applying your actives in the evening give them a chance to really do their job uninhibited all while you sleep. Now that we've covered some general guidelines, let's get into product details and considerations you'll want to make before purchasing and using. Lactic acid is derived from sour milk and is known for its skin softening abilities. It's an alpha hydroxy acid that is great for reducing fine lines, improving skin tone and texture, fading pigmentation, and controlling oiliness and breakouts. Lactic acid has larger molecules than its famous counterpart glycolic, making lactic acid less likely to cause irritation. If you suffer from sensitive skin or conditions like rosacea, or if you are prone to hyperpigmentation, I'd highly suggest consulting with an esthetician before starting a direct acid, even lactic. If your skin is unable to tolerate the acid, you may end up compromising your barrier, which will take more time and money to fix than what you'll invest in this product line. As with any direct acid, you should expect some breakout upon use since the product speeds up cell turnover, getting rid of old skin cells and bringing new ones to the surface. If after 14 days of use, you're still getting breakout, or if you're breaking out in areas where you don't normally, I would stop using the product. Aside from lactic and hyaluronic acid, this serum utilizes mountain pepper leaf extract, which contains rutin, an antioxidant that works to combat free radicals, inhibit the oxidation of vitamin C, and strengthen capillaries, which reduce dark circles and puffiness. 
I've linked a study in the description that discusses the anti-aging benefits of rutin in skincare in case you'd like to check it out. This lactic acid serum utilizes Tasmanian pepper fruit extract to combat irritation that may occur from the use of a higher concentration direct acid. The Ordinary also utilizes this same extract in their advanced retinoid 2% emulsion for the very same reason. Even though lactic acid is generally well tolerated, I still want to remind everyone that these serums are not for those who are sensitive or for those who have compromised barriers or for those who are prone to hyperpigmentation. I have the same recommendation for this serum as I do most direct acids. Apply in the evening two or three times per week at most and give your skin at least 14 days to get used to the product. If after 14 days you are still breaking out or if you're breaking out in places where you don't normally, discontinue use. In fact, you probably don't need this particular product unless you have resilient skin. And even then, I think if you were to just increase the number of days you apply their 5% concentration, you'd be happy with the results. Just because there is more of something doesn't mean that the product is going to work any faster or any better for that matter. Surface wrinkles, uneven skin tone, compromised barrier, whatever the problem, it most likely took months or even years to develop these issues in the first place. And let's be real, great results take patience and they take time. Azelaic acid is a topical antiseptic derived from wheat and barley. It's used in a variety of applications, including treatment of acne, brightening of hyperpigmentation, and promoting skin healing. If you suffer from rosacea or melasma, Azelaic acid is often used in products that treat those conditions. This particular suspension provides straightforward azelaic acid along with some silicone for a smooth application. I'm blown away that The Ordinary is charging under $10 US for this product, considering the benefits azelaic acid seem to have for a multitude of skin concerns. Like I said earlier, if you are an acne or rosacea sufferer, this product may be beneficial for you. Azelaic acid is generally safe for all skin tones, so if you are higher up on the Fitzpatrick scale and are looking to correct post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, that's just a fancy word for dark spots some people experience after a breakout, this product is one you may want to consider. There is, of course, one caveat. Azelaic acid isn't without its own potential side effects ranging from itchy skin to a full-blown allergic reaction. I would consult with a skincare professional and be sure to perform a patch test first before taking this product out for a spin. If you aren't familiar with patch testing, here are a few guidelines. The last direct acid by The Ordinary is this 5% concentration of alpha lipoic acid. Alpha lipoic acid is considered the universal antioxidant because, when taken internally, is soluble both in water and in fat. It is 400 times stronger than vitamins E and C, helps regulate the production of oil glands, and has even been shown to decrease scar tissue. Alpha lipoic acid is extremely vulnerable to degradation by sunlight and higher concentrations, 5% and higher to be exact, may cause a burning or stinging sensation when applied to the skin. Alpha lipoic acid, while soluble in water, loses a lot of its stability, which is why you won't find any water in this serum. Also, because there is no water or other emollients, the serum may feel oily for a few minutes after application until it absorbs. For these reasons, you should only apply alpha lipoic acid in the evening two to three drops at most. And I wouldn't recommend applying this serum more than once, maybe twice per week. If you do feel the need to increase application to three times per week, although I really wish you wouldn't, 
I strongly recommend diluting it with a facial oil of your choice to reduce the chance of sensitivity over time. If you are already sensitive, prone to sensitivity, currently using retinol, potent forms of topical vitamin C, or other alpha or beta hydroxy acid products, don't even go there with this serum. You may be thinking, Summer, I really think this may work for my skin. And if that's the case, may I suggest scheduling a consultation with a licensed esthetician first. I don't want to vilify this product. I think there are certain types who may very well benefit from it. However, because there are so many considerations that must be made, I'd go see someone who knows skin and who can help create a regimen that involves this product and others like it. Overall, I appreciate the decisions Desium made with their direct acids. I think they can definitely be useful as long as you do some research first and as long as you understand your skin type and its tendencies. Less tends to be more when it comes to the long-term health of our skin and there's no need to overdo it. More often than not, I tend to err on the side of caution when it comes to active skincare and its use at home, especially when I haven't done a skin analysis or created the regimen specifically for a client. I do believe that products like this have a place in my professional world, and I would be stupid to ignore them. At the end of the day, I just want you to have the information you need to make the best choices. I always include links to my research in the description and encourage you to do your own. I also encourage you to get in touch with me or leave a comment if you have a question. I'm here to help you as best I can. And that's it for part two of our series. Part three is on its way soon, so be on the lookout for that. If you haven't already and would like to, please subscribe to my channel. I post as regularly as I can, usually once per week, and I'm always open to suggestions. I've been on this YouTube bus for a little over a month now, and I'm excited to see the interest in what I have to say growing with each video. Thank you so much for being here. As always, my social media is below if you'd like to connect. And most importantly, stay unapologetically you. Until next time, bye guys.